We full-time RV with e-bikes, but it wasn't always this way. We hit the road in August of 2022 and we purchased e-bikes in November of 2022. So it only took us three months to understand that there was huge potential between the relationship e-bikes and RVs. I don't know if anyone's noticed, but e-bikes are so expensive anymore and getting incredibly popular. They are everywhere. I've seen e-bikes ranging all the way from $8,000 all the way down to $600. It just depends on what you're looking for. But the average e-bike you're going to find is going to be between two and $3,000. And we haven't even covered what you're going to need after the purchase. We're not trying to sell you an e-bike today, but at these prices, the pressure's on to get it right the first time and stay within your budget. And that's what this video is all about. Today, we're gonna show you our mistakes and successes. This is an in-depth look at RVers and e-bikes. Brian's version. Number one, right off the bat, don't get cocky. Go do your research on these bikes and read reviews. Ask anyone you know that has one and see if they like it. There are 250 companies out there in America trying to sell you an e-bike right now. You can always tell when you're riding around, you see someone who didn't do any research and does not enjoy the ride they're getting on their bike. They always look exactly like this. You wanna look more like this guy. This guy did his research, He's very confident and he's gonna go make a purchase that he's gonna be happy with. So don't be that guy. Do your research. As an RVer, we have been delayed many times in our plans, waiting for parts, chasing down parts. It's a nice question to ask. They, you might not always get a straight answer, but try to figure out where are those parts coming from and where can I get them. A major thing you'll want to do is to get yourself a test drive. Especially if you're an e-rider for the very first time, you really need to understand the power behind these bikes. It's a big purchase, so you want to get it right. Which is why I'm going to drop some knowledge on you right away. Power is more important than range. Definitely for RVers, and here's why. When you RV, you have more opportunities to explore different landscapes and terrains with every move. So you're not taking the same route very often, and you don't want to get stuck on a hill or a surface like sand wishing that you had more power. On average, e-bikes can travel 20 to 75 miles on a single charge, but it does depend on how you drive it. Our bikes have a 55 mile range, and we drive ours pretty hard, so we end up charging after 25 to 30 miles. Range is important as well. I mean, it's fun to think about how far can I go, 100 miles? I mean, the possibilities sound exciting, but you quickly realize that even on the most comfortable seats, 30 miles on a bike is usually enough for the day. So with those 30 miles, you want to make sure you can carve up any type of surface or road that you approach, which is why go for power, less on the range. If you can afford to get both, do it. Okay, and here are some really important things that you're gonna need after your e-bike purchase that you're probably not thinking about. We're gonna start off with some of the cheaper things uh, and we're gonna start right here with the all-weather cover. So you're definitely gonna need a cover for the bikes. These things are not meant to get wet. In fact, it's encouraged to travel with the batteries secure inside out of the weather. But this is uh, weatherproof. It's gonna keep, you know, for maybe a couple years, I think then the UV gets to these guys. This is $42. You're gonna need a couple bike helmets, okay? These are gonna run you maybe 50 bucks a piece. You know, these are very important and in some cases uh, required by state law. You're gonna need some driving gloves too. Uh, you know, they're usually the first thing that, that hits the ground is your hands, you know, as you brace yourself. So, you know, maybe a, a set of $20 driving gloves uh, are gonna be important as well. And we got our bike cover, a couple helmets, driving gloves. I don't have those examples for you right here. We, you've seen them. We usually use like some uh, work gloves, Milwaukee gloves. If your bike doesn't come with accessories, like our bike didn't come with anything on it. Here, let me show you what we added. So this we added, I added that to it thinking we would add additional things to it. We haven't yet. That's about 80 bucks. We added this little makeshift fender. Some of them come with front baskets, lights, 
Dare's light broke off, so we had to get a new light for her. Little things like that um, happen all the time. And as you can see, we didn't get rear baskets, front baskets, or really anything that came with our bikes. So if your bikes don't come with anything and you have to accessorize, you can pretty much count on adding another $150 minimum to each of the bikes just to get them the way that you want them. So all these things are important for RVers and, and e-bikers alike, but here is something that an RVer is gonna have to definitely take account for in their budget because this is where you're gonna spend some money is the transportation of the bikes. And here comes the truth bomb for us. We had to spend an additional $900 to get our bikes properly rolling for the RV life. And trying to transport these bikes the cheapest way possible only works for so long. And let me show you what I'm talking about. In our first rig, we traveled with our bikes inside the camper, which seems insane now. And not something we recommend unless you have like a toy hauler or something that can accept the bikes. Having the bikes inside made move days more difficult. Bathroom breaks were a little harder. Of course, they track in all the dirt. And when you're driving around on the highway, they kind of move around a little bit inside the camper. And they just do way more harm than good. So for all those reasons, I did not want the bikes inside our new rig. So I was left wondering. Can my current bumper handle the additional weight of the e-bikes? I was determined to make our current flimsy little bumper work for these bikes, but guys, e-bikes are way heavier than normal bikes. So these frames are way thicker than your normal bike, and you know, they are motor powered, so they don't need to be so light because you're not doing a lot of the work most of the time. These bikes with the batteries are gonna weigh about 70 pounds a piece. Okay, without the batteries, they're still way heavier than normal bikes. So you're gonna need a heavy duty bike rack that can support the weight of your bikes. I was determined to make my current bumper work, so I installed a receiver hitch on the existing bumper and bought a heavy duty bike rack that can support the heavier e-bike weight. Bingo, problem solved, I'm a genius. <laughs> well. Actually, it didn't take very long for me to notice the sagging and then what I noticed next gave me straight chills. Surprise! But my first thought was that I could still salvage this bumper and so I looked to have it reinforced with some additional welding. It's a big day for one reason, because we're on our way to Ricky the welder. Ricky is gonna help us get this problem with the bumper fixed. So right here, this bumper has come apart. I'm not sure what our bumper weight rating is, but I know that we're putting about 350 some odd pounds on the bumper when the bikes are here on this hitch. So what it's done is, is you know, I think it's finally done a lot of bouncing and it's worked its way free. Uh, we're gonna take you along on this journey this morning. That's gonna lead us to Henderson, Nevada, to a shop. He says it's gonna be a tight fit. I believe him, it sounds tight.
we got the guy helping. It's quite the busy road, but we'll see what we can do. This is what we got working on. I'm literally on the road for Brian to back out. Oh my god. Okay, not taking the big road, but took this other tight area. Yikes. This is the whole big thing for the the entire reason for the season is this guy here. So if you look real close, as you can tell, we got a huge problem here, a big crack happening from the fish plate that uh, Ricky did for us. And although it might be hard to see, um, it is also pushing this way on this bracket right inside here. And so it is, uh, folding in on itself essentially so what we're gonna do today is remove this and get all of our bike weight off of this popcorn tin bumper but if you see right here just watch the, the play that the bumper has it's 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 really bad and and the bouncing is is actually what is destroying this whole thing so it lasted I don't know, maybe 600 miles. It probably could go more. We even put this uh, wood piece underneath here um, because there is a, a small space. So we slid a two by four but to uh, stop it from pushing down. But what that ended up doing was just popping the weld even further on this side. So we'll just go back to that bumper holding the spare tire in the grill. And then I'm gonna put that bumper on today right underneath here and then slide this baby right in. So hopefully our heavy ass bikes can fit on here and we don't have any problems going down the road. But every project always seems to have a curveball. So let's see what this one does for us. The only two travel trailers we've owned and most of what we see on the road have bumpers just like this, what I'm about to show you, and are not really rated for any weight other than what basically comes on the bumper from the factory. Here's your run of the mill, no weight bumper right here. Look how thin this is right here, okay? This thing is not rated for any weight. Look how thick the frame is. And compared to this, it's virtually nothing. What's holding it up in here are just some little just a small weld to the frame. But make no mistake, this is not the same as this. Well, you might be thinking, well, why didn't you just do that from the start? And I'm a little embarrassed to admit that it didn't even occur to me to look at adding something additional to my already existing bumper. Like it, it just didn't even cross my mind to look at anything like that. I think it's just in my nature to try to make it work with what I have and try to avoid big purchases. But I'm learning pretty fast out here that going cheap always costs me more money in the long run. Maybe you guys can relate to that. So after spending money on that brand new hitch, I needed to bolt it up to the frame, right where my gas line was for my quick connect. So I didn't feel comfortable relocating that gas line myself, so I called a local mechanic named Trey King and he agreed to meet us at the Home Depot parking lot where he helped me relocate the gas line and install the hitch. So we are at the Home Depot meeting him now. I'm gonna go talk to him. Brian's gonna go talk to him and get it all situated, but we got the hitch right here. Whatever the width of the washer ends up being. You're the working dog, huh? Alright, so it sounds exactly like this guy knows what he's doing. He wanted us to change out the bolts, so Brian and I just went inside Home Depot, got four new bolts for it, and they are back to work on it. Alright, 
access points. So another quick update, Brian's getting ready to drill some holes, but the guy is gonna go get a grinder because this is still an issue. There's my honey getting ready to drill some holes, but this washer won't allow for it to sit flat and it won't pop off. So the mechanic's gotta go get his grinder to get that off. And in the meantime, Brian is gonna get this, a couple holes. That's some hot metal filings. All right, it's time to step up the bit. Time for the big dad. Well, the medium daddy. <laughs> hot? Yes! Oh, damn. Get off. Big daddy's on now. That is the most I can do for this guy right now. He's got to come back with that grinder. So just a little bit of teamwork out here with these mobile techs helps move the process along a little bit. You know, not all the time do they like you to be hovering around. So we try to be gone and come back just to see if they need help, but, or an extra pair of hands really. Um, otherwise we try to stay out of their way, but He's already relocated the gas line within 15 minutes of being here. So far, everything's going as planned, minus this grinder. So it's going to be so much better than this. You'll see. Yeah, basically, it's a few inches lower than I'd like, but it's going to it's going to pull yeah, away. I'm glad we were able to just delete that and we don't have to make a big deal about it. Okay, we got the bike rack um, secured onto our new receiver hitch. Let's take a look at it. So this is where here we got it bolted up here and then one more down there right to the frame. This is the extension bolt. Um, if you want to make it shorter, you got to drill a hole, I believe. Then it extends all the way to the other side where we bolt those two. And uh, the only thing I had to do was move the tire. It was uh, just bumping up against uh, this part of the bike rack here. So we just had to move the tire a little bit further over. We're gonna lose, you know, three inches, but this is so solid. It's like a, a gnarly skid plate. And then the bikes obviously uh, come up and sit up a little higher. That'll be my lowest point down here, <sighs> but a lot better than the popcorn tin bumper. And as you can see, it's really, really solid. Um, as you can see, I'm jumping on it right here. Man, I am really looking forward to the sturdiness of this. <sighs> we can't be having these bikes <laughs> fall off on the highway. <laughs> Uh, and uh, cause a bunch of problems, so uh, mission complete. Let's take a quick look at my bike two years in and 1600 miles. So you can see the display here is at 516 miles. That is because I had to replace this display at 1100 miles. One thing that should just raise your flag a little bit about buying used is I didn't realize that you could just reset your miles to zero by replacing a display. That was shocking to me. And in fact, my miles were a badge of honor to me. I, I liked racking them up. Um, so to have it go back to zero was quite a bummer, but something to keep in mind that you can't trust the displays, at least on this particular uh, brand and model. I don't know how everyone's else's is, but which, you know, the miles don't just carry the miles on the tires and the motor, but that's also miles on the battery. So it's very important. This is what a bike looks like after two years of riding and 1600 miles. There's a lot of scratches on this guy everywhere it is dinged up big time and i'm going to tell you what we've had to replace and what has broken these things 
have been through a lot, no doubt. Way more than what they're trail rated for. Here's a couple of things that I've replaced. This monitor has been replaced. That was $124. This nut in here and this gear got stripped out within like the first 20 miles of having this bike. The warranty covered that, had that replaced for free. These tires have held up surprisingly well, but I have had to replace a tube in this one. The controller, basically the brains of this bike did fail on me. That is a $200 part and I had to replace that as well. So the monitor, the controller, and this pedal gear, and the tube and the tire have all been things that have slowed us down. Dare's bike has had one malfunction and it is the pedal assist magnet has gone out. That's $20. Her monitor is going out right now. This will only give us this gray screen. So we currently don't have a good idea of what's going on with her bike when it's on. Her bike has also seen a little bit better days, but she got the white. The scratches come in, coming through a little bit easier on these. The bike charger for each of these bikes is $184 and we have had to buy one of those. So this one came with it. This, you'll get one that comes with your bike. Uh, this broke, we had to buy a new one. This is that uh, $185 charger. So the bike ownership after purchase just continues to rack up dollar bills, dollar bills, dollar bills. I thought this was interesting. So my bike cost $1,800 brand new. We've had $324 worth of repairs on it. So that is a total of $2,124. If you take that divided by the number of miles that I have, which is right at 1,600, you're gonna end up with $1.33 per mile as the cost of ownership on one of these things. Is that good? Is that bad? I really don't know. This is our first e-bike. My first reaction to that was is that I need to get this bike up to like two to 4,000 miles to really get my money's worth. If you take care of them and keep up with the maintenance, the battery and the motors on some of these things can last between three to 10 years on average. So I guess time will tell how much lower I can get it. So after knowing all of this, do you still want to add an e-bike to your RV life? When we look back at our time with and without the bikes, we see the value. They're fairly integrated into our lives out here and are in use almost every day. We do laundry, we run the dog, take out the trash, run to the store, and they're also great for scouting and boondocking locations nearby. Once we get on the road, we will show you a little bit of this trail. How do you like that? We get a lot of exercise on these bikes, believe it or not. We can be exhausted after some rides because you can still do a lot of the work if you want to. Bikes are amazing for covering lots of ground quickly in new areas. You get a chance to run with your bike first. You can explore the areas quicker. You can spend more time at your favorite spots, which we do often. Walking on the beach is great, but riding on them is a completely different experience. to elevate our beach experiences in Oregon and California this way. This is a six minute bike ride to the beach. Look at this, it's pretty awesome. All right, RVers, so what did we learn today? Number one, research your e-bike company. Number two, test drive the model you're looking at or something similar before you make the purchase if you can. Number three, if you're put into a corner with your budget, pick power over range. Number four, settling on that budget and a realistic one. Number five, transporting the e-bikes properly is gonna be a huge part of that budget for an RVer. And just remember, e-bikes aren't for everyone, so make sure you go and test drive anything you can get your hands on and see if you can get one that fits for you. 
but we hope this gave you some valuable information before you go out and make this big purchase. And guys, make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss our newest videos, and we will see you next time. Bye for now.